Do you guys remember back when I started doing Switch content and a lot of my videos were about the fact that everyone didn't think the Switch was going to be successful, everyone thought the Switch was going to fail, the Switch has no games, the Switch has no games. I'm in the middle of moving house right now, I'm staying at an Airbnb, long story, don't make me get into it right now. This moving box was my dedicated Switch box. This entire tub is literally full of only Switch games and I don't have them all, if there isn't enough already. That Direct, holy crap, that Direct was about the best thing we've seen from Nintendo since E3 2017. They went all out. I mean, yes, a lot of us would have loved to have seen Bayonetta and Metroid. I mean, it's been a while since those were announced, but apart from that, they came out the gate swinging and brought some of their heaviest hitters to the table. Let's just get it out of the way right at the start of this video animal crossing i know so many of you are so excited about that right now i'm excited for you i'm excited to play animal crossing for the first time i actually watched this event with kim and she loves animal crossing so she was losing her mind the same way all of you guys were i'm sure so that's fantastic and i love nintendo's humor lately they keep trying to fake us out and pull pranks on us like in the last one where they announced k roll but they made it look like it was just DDD, haha, ha, kidding, kidding. In this one, they made it look like Animal Crossing was gonna finally come to the Switch, and then, oh, nope, Isabella is actually in Smash Brothers. But then, of course, not even two minutes later, we see a new Animal Crossing coming 2019. But seeing a big Nintendo franchise make a return on the Switch, building the Switch up to be the ultimate Nintendo system, which has every single one of their big franchises on it, RIP F0, but it's becoming the ultimate Nintendo system. Their mindset right now just seems to be ultimate, ultimate everything. They want everything they're doing right now to be the ultimate version of that thing, both in the console and their games. And you're seeing that from not only the range of games, as I said, all of their big franchises making a return and appearing on the system. You have things like in the individual games themselves, Smash Brothers Ultimate is the obvious one, going out of their way to make sure it has absolutely everything any fan could possibly want from every Smash ever. But then you also have other games doing it more subtly. Like, I don't know if any of you noticed, but Super Mario Party, they didn't just slap an 11 on there and call it Mario Party 11. It's Super Mario Party, and it's actually looking like the biggest and best Mario Party ever. They highlighted the fact that there's 80 all-new mini-games that we've never seen before. But they also talked about how the mode we all actually like and enjoy is back, where you move independently on the board. You're not all in one stupid cart. But on top of that, there's solo play, so you can play on your own, and they just just sort of hinted to the fact that it's everything that you've ever loved about Mario Party with a ton of extra things and features on top of it. It seems like the ultimate Mario Party as well. And now you see this system going back to its roots with some NES games that we get to play for free with the online service, which they finally talked about. I know I kept going on about this in my previous videos because it seemed like they just didn't want to talk about it publicly before people have to start paying for something that was free previously. I would have really thought they should have talked about this earlier, but they finally did. It was kind of awesome. We are getting cloud saves, which is something I did not think we would see from Nintendo this generation. They're usually kind of behind when it comes to the new fancy age technology. Not only if you damage your Switch, but if you want to upgrade your Switch. Let's say you want to get one of these fancy additions like the Pikachu and the the edition switch that's coming out or the smash ultimate switch that's coming out you can buy it and then just start playing on your cloud saves I'm very curious to see what the special gift is that they mentioned in this little segment. And of course, we are getting the NES games with NES controllers to go along with them. And that's what I meant by going back to its NES roots, because now we can play NES games on an NES controller. If the NES Classic wasn't enough for you, now we can do that on the Switch as well. Oh, and we, we have to talk about... Luigi's Mansion 3. First one I remember borrowing from a friend in high school to play on my GameCube and it was just about the most fun I ever had on a borrowed game. Like a game that my friend at school was like, you have to play this game. You, you haven't played Luigi's Mansion? I hadn't even heard of it. And he lent it to me for a week, but I finished it in like two days. I loved that game. So good. Katamari? Can, okay, can we please stop getting so butthurt every time there's a direct. I am sick of every time there's any kind of direct or indie direct, that sucked, where's Smash? That sucked, Animal Crossing, that sucked. I want this, I want that. Can we please take a step back and remember the fact 
that Nintendo doesn't even have to do these directs. That no one else does this. You don't see Sony doing this. You don't see Microsoft doing this. They have their one events here and there. They have the E3s. But you don't see anyone else coming out once a month, twice a month, and just letting you know about everything on your favorite system. Just letting you know everything that's coming in the next month, six months, or over the next year. It's crazy that Nintendo even does this. So if they want to do two back-to-back -back that's just indies, let them do it. And now right around the corner, after all of your moaning and complaining, you get what was the best direct. And I swear to holy Mario, if I see even one tuber try and say that this direct sucked because it didn't have F-Zero, or it didn't have insert X franchise here, I'm gonna lose my damn mind. We got Katamari Reroll, a remaster of Katamari fantastic games. Another one that Kim was going crazy for. As soon as she saw it, her hype was through the roof. I love these games and I haven't played them nearly enough. So this is a perfect chance for me to dive in and roll some garbage around. <sighs> God, okay. So somewhere in here is my Octopath Traveler. Oh, actually, it's right here on the side. So back in July, Square Enix dropped this little bad boy on the system and it sold a million copies pretty soon after that. And I think Square Enix looked at that, looked at the Switch, looked at that, looked at the Switch and went, Final Fantasy. <laughs> Final Fantasy 7, Final Fantasy 9, Final Fantasy 10, 10, 2, 12, Final Fantasy 15. Pocket edition, we'll get to that. Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles, and finally, Final Fantasy World of, what is it called? Insane. I, I, I actually, this, this, this one was ruined for me. I've known about this for a couple weeks and kept it kind of hush hush, but seeing it actually come true and actually right there on my screen, is insane. Final Fantasy IX is my favorite Final Fantasy of all time, and I haven't played it in a very, very, very long time. Seven is obviously great, and I've never finished it, so this is my chance to, you know, finish it. Ten holds a special place in my heart from my teenage years, and Ten Two I never actually played, so here's my chance. Twelve has never really looked all that interesting to me, but hey, here's <laughs> so much Final Fantasy, I'm sure I'll get to it eventually, right? 15 Pocket Edition. That might upset some people. I'm not sure if it would, if anyone actually cares. It's pretty much the game. Just, you know, it's dumbed down. Almost like chibi looking characters, but you actually do get to play pretty much the full game and get the full experience. Final Fantasy 15 in all its glory, running on the Switch, eh, it was never gonna happen. I could tell you it was never gonna happen. So if they wanted to put the Pocket Edition on, which, you know, is mobile friendly, Switch friendly, I'm all down for that. So yeah, Square Enix definitely saw that success on the system and thought, screw it, let's just, let's just see what sticks and then we'll go from there. I love Pokemon games. I'm really excited to play Pikachu and Eevee. Kim and I are gonna get one each. It's gonna be a lot of fun, I can't wait. But apart from Pokemon games, I don't even know what else Game Freak has actually made. However, they are now making a brand new game for the Nintendo Switch. I'm excited to play a Game Freak game that isn't Pokemon. It looks really cutesy and I look forward to trying it out. We finally got a title for the Yoshi game. I swear this game just disappeared. They announced this way back with Bayonetta and Metroid, but we expected those two games to take forever. A lot of us thought Kirby and Yoshi were gonna come out around the same time, but Yoshi just disappeared. We, we, didn't, we, just, we finally got a title right now. So Yoshi's Crafted World is the official title, and I like the look of it. Before when it was just a standard Yoshi game and a crafted kind of looking world where you flip the screen around, I, I don't know. Something about that was like, oh, I feel like I played this before. But they did point out that not only can you flip the world around, but you can play the whole level in reverse, which is actually some pretty creative game design. If it's not just flipping around for certain parts and you can actually flip around and play the whole level backwards and it's kind of different playing it frontwards and backwards, that's a pretty cool concept. No matter who you are, there was something for you. I swear, if you didn't like this direct, you're just being difficult at this point. Like, they, 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 I don't, there wasn't Bayonetta and Metroid, which are my two most wanted things from Nintendo right now, and yet I couldn't be happier with that direct. And those two things weren't even shown. This was amazing. If you didn't like this, get off your high horse, man. Get off your high horse, it was great. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. Hey, I'm not saying that you're wrong if you didn't like it. I kinda am though. <laughs> I'm trying to remember if I forgot anything. I know they showed Damon X Machina, if that's how you even pronounce it. I'm so bad at pronouncing things, I apologize. Not really my style of game, if I'm being totally honest, but again, it's a completely different style of game, which just gives more people more options, which I love. 
And I think the last thing, unless I'm forgetting something, was a bunch of DLC for stuff. DLC for Splatoon 2, DLC for Mario Tennis, which honestly, I kind of stopped playing tennis shortly after I got it. This is going to bring me back in, mostly because I want to play as Petey Piranha and just use my hands and not actually use a racket because Petey Piranha is awesome. <sighs> And then, and then, and then, we saw the DLC for Xenoblade 2. I gotta be honest, I'm gonna try it. I know a lot of you in the comment section of a lot of my videos have been saying, at least try the DLC. They've changed up the gameplay. The gameplay is different. The gameplay is better. Blah, 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 blah. I'm gonna try it. I'm not that stubborn that I won't try it. I've actually, it, there's it been a little part of me nagging at me saying, hey, just, just on Twitch, stream Xenoblade. Give it an honest shot, an honest second chance. But you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do the DLC instead. From what I gather, it's like a prequel to the game that just got released, which is actually a really great idea because even if you haven't played Xenoblade 2 yet, you could pick up this prequel and start here and play with this. And if you love that, you can move on. So I'm hoping I love it and it makes me want to move on and try Xenoblade 2 again. I really do want to try, guys, I promise. I freaking, I love the Switch. I am, <laughs> I must seem so Switch obsessed sometimes, but I, I, I love it, man. Like I grew up on Nintendo. I grew up with an NES and I've been following it for the longest time and I followed it through the Wii U and I love the Wii U. I made videos about the Wii U and I, I just wanted people to love the Wii U with me. I wanted people to jump on that Wii U train and no one wanted to. I mean, some people did, but it was a fight. And now we have this Switch, which is the ultimate Nintendo system and it has everything from Nintendo's history coming back or just involved or around it and it's just ultimate Nintendo and I... I love it. It just makes me so happy. Really quickly, I want to apologize for a few things. If you didn't watch my flood video, my house flooded, which is why I'm in an Airbnb right now, and it's really echoey. There's no carpet, there's nothing to dampen the sound. I'm really hoping this video doesn't sound too awful, and if it did, I apologize. I apologize for the weird background, doing the best I can while I'm here. It's only for the next couple weeks. I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I'm sorry if it's bad. But for now, that's all. If you like this video or you learned a little something, make sure you subscribe because we become best friends and oh, I need friends right now. Click or tap on this video right here because it was probably better and less echoey than this one. As always, there's giveaways down below and guys, I'm really, really happy to be here right now. This is the first video, proper video I've, I've managed to shoot in like two weeks because of everything and I'm just, I, I love you guys. Thank you. I'm out.